good morning. Welcome back to Starkey Formstead. I want to invite you to come with me on my two-acre Formstead as I show you something you've never known before. Did you know, even if you're an organic or a natural farmer, you may be accidentally bringing bacteria, fungus, and toxic chemicals onto your property without even knowing it. And then it's bad enough that they're admitting that they're dumping all those heavy metals from the sky on us all the time. So recently I did a video, did this happen to you too? Talking about how poor everyone's gardens did in 2024. Now I am my own moderator, which means I read each and every one of your comments. And did you guys wanna know what I noticed? That the majority of people told me two things, my hibiscus and my blackberries did very well. So being the curious woman that I am, I started digging and I realized that as usual, God always provides the answers if you just know what question to ask, folks. There is something called phytoremediation. It is an amazing technique that happens from plants, for plants, by plants. So my name is Samantha and I hope you'll hang out with me for a few minutes while I tell you how to inexpensively clean your soil and your water without spending any money at all except on a few plants. Did you know that phytoremediation has been around since the Greeks and the Romans? Not only that, NASA actually helped the American military use phytoremediation to clean up Agent Orange at their toxic military sites. So I guess a great way to explain what phytoremediation is, is basically putting the right plant in the right soil to, re to remove the right toxin. See, your plant has roots, and as those roots go down into the soil, some plants have been created to remove things that could be toxic to you and I. Now, that could be a bacteria, it could be a fungus, even a virus, folks, but most importantly, heavy metal toxins. Because I find this topic so amazing, I did a little research and found this clip for you guys. Generate chemically contaminated soil for healthy food production, it's important to take a systematic approach that prioritizes natural and organic methods. Natural remediation techniques can be used to regenerate the soil. Phytoremediation is a natural technique that involves using plants to absorb and break down contaminants in the soil. For example, sunflowers are known to remove heavy metals from the soil. Other techniques include using compost, cover crops, and crop rotation to increase soil fertility, structure, and biological activity. It's crucial to avoid using chemicals that can further harm the soil and the environment. This means refraining from using synthetic fertilizers, pesticides, herbicides, and other chemicals in the remediation process. Composting is a natural process of recycling organic matter that helps to improve soil health. By composting organic waste, such as food scraps, leaves, and grass clippings, it's possible to create nutrient-rich compost that can be used to replenish the now soil. Now that we know what phytoremediation is, let's talk about how did you accidentally bring in toxins or bacteria onto your property. Well, the first way is purchasing plants, tubers, or seeds from companies and or individuals. A lot of times, if you get a plant that is already growing in a pot, you could inadvertently be bringing on so many issues onto your property, folks. Second thing, if you accidentally purchase biosolid from your municipal principality, in other words, you know, the city is selling you some biosolids or some waste, or you want to get some from a local farmer, be extremely careful, folks, because those are considered like gray water. Okay, so just watch this and in a second I'm going to explain how you can make all this stuff yourself and not have to bring it onto your property. But I'm going to give it to you. Basically, a lot of farmers and gardeners, including myself, use biosolids, aka biosolid compost, from our wastewater treatment plants as an alternative to ammonia nitrate or aka fertilizers. It's a treat, it's a cheaper alternative, and it's a typically it's supposed to be a safer alternative and more nutrient dense base than just regular fertilizer. Okay, moving on. Up until like 2018 or 2020, wastewater treatment plants around the U.S. didn't really test for PFAS. But since there's so many ongoing lawsuits about this, they do now. However, some of the results are showing that there are 
more PFAS being released in the discharge from the wastewater treatment plants than it is when they're coming in. But why is that? That part you'll have to go research yourself because that's a lot more than I got time to PFAS explain. Or better known as forever chemicals. So yes, yeah, she is correct. That is a whole nother topic. But my warning to you is this. It's coming onto your property. And a lot of us moved on a property that our families never owned. So you really don't know, did the people prior to you burn plastic on your property? Is geoengineering going on in your state and toxins are coming in that way? Where is your water coming from? See, all of that, including what you accidentally bring on your property, is what is making America's soils so toxic. So the way you can fix that is you can see what grows best on your property. You don't even need a soil test. What I realized was my garden did not do well, but my hibiscus thrived. So out of curiosity, I Googled it. And guys, this is what I found. Hibiscus is an amazing phytoremediation plant. Once planted, that hibiscus, its roots get into the soil and it begins to pull all of these crazy toxins out of my soil. Now, you might be asking a very smart question. Where do those toxins go? Because that's what I asked. And what I found out is that usually more of it is stored in the leaves than in the fruit or the flowering part of the plant. So my suggestion would be if your garden did very poorly this year and you cannot or will not get a soil sample, then try some different plants in that area next year. The one that thrives will be the indicator of what's actually in your soil. Because see, this is what hibiscus pulls out of the soil. This is what sunflowers pulls out of the soil. This is what daisies pull out of the soil. So by just noticing and being observant about what is growing and isn't growing, you can deduce most likely what toxins are present. Now the really interesting fact is you can still use these plants to feed your livestock and to feed yourself because not that much of it is actually stored in a way that you can pull it out. Now, what I've really noticed is the water. Water is the issue because water is life. The Bible tells us that, folks. Your body is made up of 70% water. It's something we cannot go without. So what happens when we can't afford to constantly have our wells checked, our city munis municipality waters checked. We don't know where to send the samples. We don't know how to do it. We can't afford it. How do we clean our water? The same plants can be used to clean your water that you just cleaned your soil with. How cool is that? So I found a research article. Now, the thing about this research article is Nobody paid for this research. There were no grants given. It was not connected to a university and or a company, which means it's probably now true. Now I'm gonna introduce to you adsorbents. These are flowers that you can dry the petals and the leaves, crush them up, place them in water, and they will absorb heavy toxic chemicals, you guys. And this is all free and you can do it at home with the no Did you money. know that nitrate contamination is caused by dairy farm runoff, cafo farm runoff, and other waste, human and animal, along with fertilizers, getting into your potable and or groundwater. That is why knowing this simple technique can really help you guys. So you're gonna take your flowers, you're gonna collect them and the leaves. Now there's four types, there's daisy, there's hibiscus and two others. I'm gonna to stick to daisy and hibiscus. You crush the flowers and the leaves. You sun dry them after rinsing them. Once they are totally dry, you crush them into the finest powder possible. And then you get a glass container, fill it with water, put your dust in it and set it out in the sun for a couple of days. That's it, that's it. And then strain out the dust with like, you know, cheesecloth or a very small strainer because you want to get all the powder from the flowers. 
after you've done that, if there was any nitrates or certain types of chemicals in there, depending on what flour you used, it will have helped to remove the contamination. This is something you can do as we're moving into prepping and preparing for whatever happens in 2025. So please remember, if your garden thrived with certain plants and other ones died, I need you to do your research. Did your hibiscus thrive? Did your blackberries thrive? Did roses thrive? If all of that is yes and the rest of your garden was funky, then guys, you need to do a little digging because I'm telling you, there is contamination coming from the sky and from the ground. But see, Leslie, our newsletter editor for Starkey Forum said, yes, we have a newsletter, comes out twice a month. If you'd like that, top of comment is how you can send me your email and your payment and you'll get two a month for six months for your payment of 30 bucks. They're amazing. Anyway, she and I wrote a book and it's titled Growing Under a Poisoned Sky. Guys, we are praying that that book will hit the shelf sometime in November of 2024. And folks, it is all this in written form, easy to follow, and is going to give you so many different ways, not just cleanse your water, your soil, but also your body. We can do this, guys. God gave us everything that we needed. Remember, in the good book, it says, my people perish for what? lack of knowledge. And if you're on this platform, baby, you ain't perishing. Like, comment, subscribe, share this video with somebody that loves to farm that maybe wasn't so successful this year. Maybe you might teach them something. Have a great day, guys. When my Dahlia tubers turned up with crowned gall, not all of them, but enough. Crown gall is a disease that can actually spread across many different plant species to include trees. And to make matters worse, once crown gall has been in your soil, it can stay there for up to four to five years. Worst part of all, I know how it got there. It came from a Dahlia tuber from a certain provider. I haven't had this issue with any other Dahlia farmers at all. But because I had the gall once, that means I can't grow any Dahlia tubers in those beds for quite a while. At least I thought so, because I found a solution that actually is working. When I was looking at what to do, I found countless sites that said, just get rid of the soil, and that's highly irresponsible if you ask me. Especially because there's a process called phytoremediation, and it's where you use very specific plants that are adept at removing specific bacteria from the soil. And then this kind of shows what that process can look like. This is flower candy. Okay, it's super easy. All you need is some dehydrated hibiscus flour and honey and honeycomb if you have any. Simply add the hibiscus flour to a pot and mix it with equal parts water. Then pour in a couple tablespoons of honey. If you have any honeycomb, you can also throw in a couple chunks. So let it boil and then simmer down for about five to six minutes on low heat and you should be good to go. Hibiscus flour, packed with nutrients, high in vitamin C and good for you.